welcome back to Fresh Bread. It's uh, great to see you. You've uh, invited some new friends, so it's good to see you sitting around the table. We're eating the Word of God together because it keeps us strong and healthy. And we're going to be reading from Genesis 14, uh, verse 18 onwards, just a few verses. And we're going to be looking at someone that I'm pretty sure we've looked at before, Melchizedek, who's an extraordinary character in scriptures. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then uh, you need to look him up and, and, and see what I mean. Um, uh, but we're going to be talking about blessing again. You'll have noticed in the last few weeks I've been talking about blessing, something God is teaching myself and uh, Hazel. Um, and we'd like to sort of get as much of that across as we can. So we're looking at uh, blessing in the, the, the life of Melchizedek. Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem and priest of God Most High, brought Abraham some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abraham with this blessing. Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High. <laughs> blessed be God Most High, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. It's a great scripture, a little mysterious, especially when you read uh, Hebrews 7, account of Melchizedek, which makes him more mysterious still. No record of his birth or of his death. He's eternal in some ways, says Hebrews. And um, so Melchizedek is a fascinating character uh, indeed. Uh, Melchizedek means king of justice. We know that at the very least from Hebrews 7, which tells us that. Here comes Melchizedek and is the king of justice. Who does that sound like to you? Um, uh, king of Salem, um, king of the city, um, means king of peace. Here comes a king of, pre of peace. Who does that sound like uh, to you? Hebrews 7.3 says he remains a priest forever. You're talking about Melchizedek. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. Well, we're told who that sounds like, <laughs> resembling the Son of God. Long before Levi, long before the law, long before priesthood, um, Melchizedek and Jesus were not in the right family to be counted as priests. They, they'd have been uh, thrown out the door if they'd tried. Uh, they represented different priesthood, differently based, earlier, uh, more fundamental, more foundational to the scriptures. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. Um, Hebrews 6.20 um, says this about Jesus. Jesus has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So uh, the, 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 the connection is getting firmer and firmer here. Uh, you look at Melchizedek and essentially you see Jesus. There are some who teach that Melchizedek was Jesus, an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. Uh, I don't quite think that. I don't think you quite have to. But it's an astounding thing to see him lifted up in this way and the parallels drawn so tightly. Uh, he resembles the Son of God. And uh, so uh, he is an eternal high priest uh, in the way that Melchizedek is also declared to be. Um, and, and I would say that Melchizedek is, is, is possibly the strongest type of Christ. Uh, someone who represents Christ, points to Christ, uh, uh, carries the elements of, of Christ in his life, and tells you something about Christ by his name, by the way he lives, and, and so on. Um, that Melchizedek is, is, I think, the strongest type of Christ in the, the whole of the scripture. Those of you who disagree with me, just send me a quick email and tell me who your candidate would be, and we'll have a great chat together. But Melchizedek is right up there um, in showing us uh, Christ in the Scriptures. Uh, Genesis 14:18 uh, says he is the king of justice, and uh, uh, many of us have come to know better and better uh, how much God loves justice and fairness and to see the poor and the oppressed and the disadvantaged and the biased against and the discriminated against, how he loves to come to them and bless them. And he comes to them more than he does to people who are feeling just fine. Thank you. Uh, the eyes of God are on the poor. And he is the king of justice. He is the king of peace. All our warring with God and with each other is, is ended in Christ. And, and Melchizedek is pointed at this kind of a figure too the priest of God most high. And then astoundingly, when we're thinking about Melchizedek uh, looking and sounding like Jesus, um, there he comes bringing to Abram some bread and wine. Doesn't it get you that um, bread and wine are brought to Abram, the father of our faith, right there at the beginning, before all the rest that follows of law and sacrifice and blood on the altar? Uh, before all of that, Melchizedek, a type of Christ, comes to Abram, our father in faith, 
and brings with him bread and wine. Um, Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. He, he comes um, representing all that he does and he, he comes to bless Abram. And remember, we, we have been talking about blessing more these last few weeks. So he, he comes to bless Abraham, and, and not because he sneezed, you know, <laughs> so often. The only time you hear this word, you know, bless you, is, is when someone sneezes. So imagine Abraham, pshoo, you know, and, and Melchizedek, oh, bless you, Abraham. No, it wasn't that. Abraham didn't sneeze. The Bible would have told us if he had. It wasn't for that, nor was it just a general blessing. You know, sometimes your, your grandkids will come or your nieces and nephews will gather around you and give you their favorite toy, their favorite stuffy. And you say, oh, bless you. Isn't that, isn't that nice? You know, it's not that kind of blessing either. This is Melchizedek. This is Abram. This is a high priest forever. And this is the father of our faith, uh, God's man on the earth at this point. And he comes and he blesses them in a very particular way. He says, blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And so he says, Abram, you are blessed by God most high. Everybody listening who's ever said, oh God, show yourself to me. I, I want to depend on you. I want my life to be in your hands. Um, you need to know this. You are blessed by God most high. The only God that matters, the only God that is, the God who is the God most high comes to be a blessing to you. And again, I've been urging us as a church, be a church where everyone says, you go to that church, you get blessed. The people are a blessing. Just being with them for two minutes is better than, than being somewhere else for five days. It's extraordinary how they are gentle and accepting and welcome everybody and open the doors. Wonderful how they just focus on you like you're the most important person on earth. And it's because we are a people of blessing. Let them say that about us because that's who we are. A uh, people that God, the God of heaven, the most high God has blessed. Blessed be Abram by God most high. Um, do you know what happened immediately after that? Or if I'm going to be strictly biblical, it actually says sometime later. <laughs> I think it's in the next chapter. Sometime later. But biblically, it's the next thing that happens. Melchizedek says, Abram, be blessed by God most high. And the very thing, next thing that happens is in um, Genesis 15. The Lord spoke to Abram. This is the very first verse. Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. Um, you know, that's great news because we're saying no to the rewards of this earth. We are, aren't we? We're, too, we're not loving this world or its rewards. And uh, that's why it's okay for you to rejoice in the reward of heaven. It's because you're saying no to a reward from anywhere else. Abram does that. He thinks it's important. And I don't want anyone saying I've been blessed except by God. And so he lives for the reward of God. And God promises that that reward will be great. He promises him descendants. He promises him children. Look at the stars. Look at the sand. This is going to be great says God over Abram, and it says, Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Melchizedek says, blessed are you, Abram, by God most high, and then this is what happens next. God expresses his faith in the promises of descendants, and God says, I'm going to bless you with many multitudes of descendants. And back to chapter 14 again. Verse 20 says, And blessed be God most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth. Wow. Who do you give a tenth to? See you next time on Fresh Bread.